So yes, we're here with Bee Phoenix. <laughs> we are on the west side behind Linney's um, on 27th Avenue Indian School. We are helping provide resources for those who are um, in, unhoused or in transition with uh, food, um, you know, hygiene supplies, clothing. Um, we have books here as well. Just, you know, whatever people need right now. You know, I think everyone can say that they've had hard times in their life. That's been further intensified by COVID, I believe. And you're just seeing the amount of homelessness increase even more so in Phoenix. I think it was like an 18% increase year over year this last year um, in, in uh, people who are unhoused in downtown Phoenix. So um, there's not enough room in shelters. There's not enough resources to be spread around. So we always need more help. We always need more things. We always need more funds to because there's just a growing population that's not supported here in Phoenix. This is a mutual aid exchange and picnic and uh, each have kind of like our roles to play so like some of us make food so we'll pick up food the day before which is like organized by Sabrina. Um, I baked cookies yesterday and then today you know we made like a split pea lentil curry with rice and a little cilantro and red onion on top and um, we just set up, like Marsha right now is just getting some of the food ready, we just set up and the Feed Phoenix helped us organize a vaccination event for our neighbors so we were able to reach a lot of people that didn't have access to the vaccine and since then we've been um, just really inspired by Feed Phoenix and wanting to help out and one of the things that we want to do is kind of do the same thing for our neighborhood because we also have a lot of people that are unsheltered. Houseless people and unsheltered people in our community are our neighbors. They're our neighbors and we need to take care of our neighbors and we need to take care of our community. Uh, these are lunches. So some people um, make dinners. Sabrina right there, she organizes the whole thing. And then we go on Wednesdays down to Eric and we pick up the ingredients for the meals we're gonna make. And a bunch of us take the, the prep work in the boxes for 10 meals and we make it at home and then we all show back here on Thursday. And then this is just us doing other stuff. I work with another organization that rescues vegetables, so I was out with them last Saturday, so that's where all the grapes came from. We're giving out meals to the local community. Um, they can, we've got lunches and then hot meals for them tonight. So. Well, I mean, it's just taking care of your neighbor, you know? It's being a good friend, good community member. We all have hard days and hard times, so may as well help out when we can. You know, it can happen to anyone, and you should be able to step in and help your community when you need it, you know? My name's Adrian, by the way. Behind, like, a Lenny's Burger. Yeah, they help, like, people out with drugs, with, with homelessness, and just stuff like that. They feed us, they give us clothes, they give us hygiene, water, make sure we stay hydrated. So it's, that's been helpful for you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but it's the choice if we want to take it. You feel me? Like, they could do so much, but I mean, if we want to change, it's up to us. We got to take the step. They, they can't take the step for us. They can't change our mind. They can't, they can't make us change. We got to do it ourselves. Um, very important for us to kind of serve here in the valley. Um, whether it be with the food or clothing, um, resources like books and education. Um, there's dog food here as well. Um, and then there's all preventative and kind of hygiene care over there for people, um, for really anybody in need. What size shoe do you need? About a nine and a half, 10. Um, I think these may look a little too big. Let's see, Let's see what we got going on with this one. Oh, this is a 10. Yeah. I'm with Lolly's Foundation for Families in a Crisis. It is um, my organization I founded. Um, and what we do is we help poverty, um, low income, and homeless families. And we try to assist them. We definitely assist them with clothing and, you know, all of the undergarments and whatever else they need. Um, the financial assistance, if, you know, we're able to uh, provide it to them, then we can do that. Um, but. Uh, mainly what we try to do is we try to get them into shelter 
as soon as they call, um, try to intervene before they are out on the streets. I'm so proud of all of us working together. You know what I mean? It's like really cool the way we all work together. We all kind of, we have the same purpose, but our needs and who and what we do are different enough to where we're not over outlapping each other. Mm, you're complimenting exactly. each other. Exactly, we're definitely complimenting each other, yes. Yeah, we're really true. focused on family. Yes, sir, focused on family. And, and we're trying to get to that next stage to where we can have our shelter as well. Um, so we, we, we help, we're, we're that middleman who comes knocking down the doors, knocking on the windows, um, not taking no for an answer, trying to get the best help that our clients need. So, we're community bridges. Um, what we're doing here is we're trying to outreach the homeless, so we offer the detox services, halfway houses, things like that. Because uh, we, we've all been here. I've been in you know drug use and things like that, so trying to help people get to another level, <laughs> get off these streets. It's too hot out here. <laughs> Ice water over here, y'all. Anybody wants to cool off? It's effective. It's filtered city water. Hey, we have three bikes here, and we're going to raffle off to anybody who wants to know. So the sidewalk project is based in LA, okay. um, and it was started there by a couple of folks that um, into like music, punk rock, you know, arts, film, that sort of stuff. Um, so in LA, it's based in Skid Row. So they have a headquarters in Skid Row, and they do um, you know work on Skid Row every day. Um, we're just an offshoot. So around 27th and Indian School, um, we're starting to see a bigger houseless population in this area of town because they're pushing them away from downtown. So, you know, a couple months ago, you would go down to the tent lots on 9th Avenue in Jefferson, um, and you'd find the predominant, you know, majority of our houseless folks there um, with the COVID tent lots. Uh, but as they close those down, they're slowly pushing folks to the outskirts. So we've been kind of moving along with the, the community. It's important because the government does nothing to support houseless folks. So. Um, we have to come out as a community to help. Um, mutual aid is massive. It does more help for the community than any of the government programs they have out there. Um, and a lot of the folks that are on the streets, they're not at the point yet where they're ready to get help from the government, even if it did exist. Um, so what we do is we try and provide, you know, as much things as we can possible. Clothes, food, we do specifically here, harm reduction, um, hygiene products. Um, and then we've started having other folks come out, like the Sonoran Prevention Works, they provide a lot of our supplies, but they come out as well to do HCV and HIV testing. Last week we had someone doing COVID testing and vaccinations. We have CBI here who are here to help folks get housing if they're at that point where they want to get it. My name's Steven, I'm with Sonoran Prevention Works. We're a harm reduction agency, and right now I'm doing HIV hep C tests, mobile testing, 10 minute results. And we're also passing out Narcan harm reduction supplies you know, giving people some information, you know, uh, if there's anything we need to connect people to, other agencies and everything. So, yeah, we're just trying to be out here, especially with the testing, you know, make people aware of their status so they can make their own decisions, know, you know, right? whether to be, you know, people be safer. <laughs> so when they have knowledge, it can be safer, you know what I mean? So, you know, like knowledge is power. If you know your status, you can choose how you move from there. You know, people who know they might have Pepsi. Uh, if people know, then they can they can make choices accordingly based on that. Eric Brickley, I go by half. Sake. The more people that are aware, the more access to resources we have, the the community has, because the more people, you know, the more more people that are aware that have something to share, the easier it is for us to get it to them. But also, as we increase the amount of people that are, that see how our most vulnerable residents of the city are treated, we're hoping to inspire them to act um, through their words, through their vote, through their dollars, to help change the situation. And also through the bridging of communities, through, through what are often disparate communities, the, shel the housed and unhoused are often, you know, different worlds and offer an opportunity for people to meet each other.